Hey, it's Dead Guy Cardboard. It's been a while, but I've picked up a ton of cards over the last four or five months and some, some very um, big cards for me, some, some from ra really rare 2 to a sixes and some, um, some cards I've wanted on my, on my bucket list for a long, long time. I'll start out with the, I guess, lesser pickups, um, you know, trying to complete the Culkin's Chip set. So I'll breeze through these, but these are pretty cool. Um, Woodruff, Louisville. Some of these Louisville cards are tough. Um, Doppert. That's how you pronounce his name. Memphis variation. Uh, Freck, Toronto. He also has a Baltimore variation. I, just, I love the looks of these Cul Culgans chips. Uh, Pinkering. I have two of the three variations. Minneapolis is, I think, the, maybe the second hardest. Omaha is a, a very tough one I don't have. Doc Crandall, pretty tough one to come across. Memphis, uh, bad Memphis, not too hard to find. Uh, now I have both Lewis's. The Indianapolis, I believe, is the harder one. Um, and I picked up this uh, Beaumont Chicago variation, uh, a lot tougher than the Boston variation. I think he has three variations. I don't have the toughest one, but this one's pretty hard to find. And I like this new uh, slab that PSA is doing for Culgan's chips. I'm not planning on getting Culgan's uh, graded. I'm probably just going to put them in an album, maybe even crack this out. But it's, it's a nice looking uh, uh, case for it. And then I picked up Jack Dunn. In case you don't know, Jack Dunn was the uh, basically the, the, the manager, the guy that discovered Babe Ruth in Baltimore. And then I also picked up this card. I can't, I can't remember the, the designation for this set, uh, but this is a Canadian issue, same photo, pretty tough card to come by um, as it was a Canadian issue uh, in, the, in the 1911, I believe. Um, yeah, and I got this for a steal. Really cool, really cool set. It's got a bio on the back. I think it was 1912. Blank it on the name of the set, but. And then um, I got a lot of just huge Tito sixes. Let's see, I don't even know where to start. Um, start with this. So I got a uh, Piedmont uh, 42 factory back. This is the, this is the hardest uh, factory uh, Back to get for Piedmont. Piedmont's in general are pretty pretty easy to come by, but the uh, factory 42s are tough. So I was happy to get that because I'm I'm gonna complete the back run. I, I was starting the back run years ago for Tito sixes, and I kind of gave up on it. You know, there were some tougher ones, a lot of tougher ones I needed, but um, you know, I just decided to go for it. <laughs> um, I'll show you some, and then I got this. Um, American Beauty 350 with frame, uh, Dick Egan. If I, if I can, I try to get uh, rare backs of Cincinnati players. You know, I, I'm from Cincinnati originally. So if I can upgrade some of these cards with a rare back, I'll, I'll do so. And, and I'm also pretty picky. I want to get not just a rare back of, of the of Reds player, but I want to have pretty good eye appeal. And this has uh, good eye appeal for an American 350 back. Uh, often considered the ugliest player in the set, <laughs> Dick Egan. Um, and then I picked up... So what, what's happened in the last, I don't know, 10, 12 months, uh, two big-time collectors of Tito Sixes, like master collectors, are trying to pick up almost every card in the set, um, including the backs. They've sold off their collections at different auction houses. So these really rare Tito Six back cards have um, essentially flooded the market um, this this year. So you can pick up some of these cards for, for a good price because there's, just, there's been a lot of that pop up. But these, these backs um, generally don't pop up, pop up that often, so you can get some for a good deal. I, I, I think most of those cards have already been sold. Most of the collections have already been sold off. Um, and so I'm, I'm assuming some of these rare back cards um, will go up in price again because they're still extremely scarce. But um, 
Here's a, here's a scarce one. Um, John Anderson Broadleaf, two and a half. Just a clean, beautiful, beautiful back. Look how clean that is. It's one of the toughest backs in the set. Uh, Broadleaf 460 is, is the toughest um, car in the set. Um, I guess you could say Lennox Brown is, but this is up there. The, Bra the Broadleaf 460 variation is up there. This is this is tough. Just a gorgeous looking back. Um, and then I picked up this uh, kind of an obscure auction house. The this is a Type One coupon. This is a New Orleans issue, and I consider this to be part of the Tito Six sets. Came out the same year. As Tito Six has the has the black fonts, unlike Type Two, Type Two, and Type Three, which has uh, blue font. Uh, the only thing that some people don't think this is a Tito Six because the card stock's thinner than Tito Six cards, but I mean, card stock on, on American Beauties were cut slim, so I don't, I don't know about that argument. Um, and you know, it has the same same design. I mean, look at this look at this broad leaf design in the back. Same with the, 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 the border design on the American Beauty. This is a really nice example of coupon. I also want a two and a half coupon from Sam Auction House, which I'm gonna uh, consign to a uh, to a REA or Heritage. But this one's for my collection, it's a Cincinnati player. And so now I have two, two coupons, and coupons are tough. I mean, they're like up there with Carolina Brights in terms of scarcity. This is This is one I picked up years ago for like less than 70 bucks on eBay because it was listed as like a type two. Um, but this, of course, has a better eye, much better eye appeal for a one than this one. Um, just some, some creasing, you, you know, you can't see too well on this. But this looks, I mean, the color on this card is like pack fresh. Just a really, really great example. A lot of coupon backs also have like paper loss here. Uh, it's believed that some might have been. We don't really know the how these were distributed. Some believe that they were taped onto boxes. Some were inserted into boxes. We don't know, but you see a fair amount of coupons with some some um, paper loss in the back, like they were taken off of a cardboard box. Like I don't. This one, yeah, this one kind of does right right here. But this is a clean, clean back. I mean, look at the color on that. So very rare back, Tito Six. And then, um, my last pick of video, I showed an Uzit card that I won on eBay. Well, I won a bunch of other Uzits, um, which I'm selling two of them, but I am holding on to this one because it is just gorgeous. This is the Uzit George Mullen with bat and a BG3. The last one I showed was a one and a half. I'll probably sell that one. Got this for a great price and just Oh, I, I, you know, when I was collecting Tito Sixes, starting to collect Tito Sixes like over 10 years ago, I would have never imagined I would have an Uzit card. I mean, that, that seemed like untouchable at the time. Um, just so happy to have in a collection. Um, but this is certainly a back I never thought I would have. Uh, picked up the Tito Six drum back. Drums are the scarcest back um, brand in the entire sets. I think Lennox Brown and, and Broadly 460s are considered scarcer than Drum, but in terms of the actual brand, this is the toughest brand in the Tito 6 set. If you don't count the tie cob back, I do not count the tie cob back as a Tito 6, a lot of people don't. So drums are extremely scarce. And what's interesting about this card is uh, it's from the St. Louis find. So I can't remember when the St. Louis find was. It was probably like 15, 18 years ago. Um, a bunch of a bunch of drums were found in, uh, in St. Louis. I think like, I don't, can't remember the number, like 30 or so drums, which is a huge find. I mean, I think there's only, there's less than 250 drums um, out in the world right now, at least graded by PSA and SGC. And this is actually the only um, Harry Howe drum in existence at least that we know about. Because um, a, a lot of the cards found in the St. Louis find were one of ones. 
Um, and just to kind of recap of Uzits versus drums, it goes back and forth. What do you, what people think is the, the toughest brand in T206. Um, some believe it's Uzits, some believe it's drum. Drum has, it's harder to find a player that you're looking for in a drum, in drum back than it is to find an Uzit. But oftentimes if you want to just to find a, a, like a, a back of any player, it's harder to find an Uzit because there's less, um, I can't, mean, I can't remember how many subjects there are of Uzits, but there's a lot less subjects that have Uzits backs um, than drum. There's a lot more players that have drum backs than Uzits, but for whatever reason, drums are extremely hard to find of your player. A lot of the drums only have, there's only one known card or maybe two known cards, or is this Uzit back? I think there's like two or three in the population report, and this one's just one. So it's currently a one of one. I hate those kind of baggy PSA casing in it. It does have a pretty, um, you know, some, some soiling on the front of his face, but uh, I mean, it's, you really get these cards for the back, and this is a a pretty clean drum back. Just a gorgeous looking back. It's got the purple font. Again, you know, if you're looking at the, uh, that really ornate uh, border, you can see how these are all related. Again, this is a, to me, this is a T206. I mean, they look very similar to the rest of them. These, um, yeah. These backs are extremely scarce. I uh, thrilled to have have them. And um, yeah, what do I have left? I, I need to pick up. Um, I don't have any Lennoxes, Lennox Black or Lennox Brown, and I don't have Carolina Brights. Um, in terms of brands, I still need a Lennox and a Carolina Bright. If I want to complete the set, I still need Lennox Brown, which is extremely scarce, Broadly 460, which is extremely scarce, um, and a Red Hindu. I might still pick up a Red Hindu. I just love the look of the, hin the, the Red Hindu backs. But uh, yeah, these are some big ones right here. I might eventually you know, try to get a T206 Broadleaf player, but it's going to be hard to, to s trade off on the eye appeal of this back. I mean, it looks so, so good. Um, and then finally, last but certainly not least, of the pickups I've picked up over many, many months. This one has kind of a story behind it. This is the 1963 Tops Pete Rose Rookie in a PSA 6. Um, I picked this card up a little bit before the National, so you know, before he passed away. Um, just a Gorgeous, gorgeous looking card. I've I've had this on my want list for years uh, in a PSA 6 to 7 range. I've just been very, very picky. I wanted to find one with, a, with perfect centering. Uh, to me, this is poor, perfect centering. Um, you know, very light chipping on the blue. This has virtually no, no white on the blue borders and no uh, print darts or snowing. And a, and a clean back as well. A little off-center in the back, but who cares? Um, I think they're usually like that anyway. Um, yeah, and I'm, like to me, this is this is deserving of a six and a half, even seven. I mean, if you look at other six and a halfs for sevens on on, on, P, on uh, eBay, they don't come close to the eye appeal of this card. And I actually had um, Brian Biedroff six um, drop this off at the national to see if I could bump up to a six and a half, which dumb on my end because you know they're this is recently graded if you you send them one card to look at they're going to really scrutinize it um but they they didn't deem this as a six and a half but i kind of call bs on that but oh well anyway I'm, I'm happy regardless of the grade definitely paid a premium for it i won it at one of the auction houses i think leland's um but yeah just huge card in my collection um i collect a three thousand hit club members and of course, he's on the top of that list, and he's a Reds player, and I'm from Cincinnati, like I mentioned, so it's a big-time card. Um, but yeah, I don't know how many other cards I'd be picking up this year with the pickup of a drum and you know Pete Rose and Uzits and all that stuff. But um, it's been a fun, fun collecting year, that's for sure. Um, but that's it. Thank you.
for watching.